What's up, good people? Thank you for clicking play on another episode of Big Man Tiny Kingdom. If you checked out my last episode, season four, episode two, then you already know this is a continuation from that point. I'll be going over the not so good things that pertain to purchasing my RV travel trailer. Before I get into that topic, I wanted to first answer a listener's question in regards to the last episode, where I mentioned the modifications I made to the camper, taking out all the water and propane appliances. I was asked, what about the resale value? Good luck finding a buyer. I'm not concerned about the resale value. I have zero intentions of selling Bad Bar. I do see myself outgrowing it at some point. I feel like the more I take on the idea of traveling full time in an RV, I probably will want something bigger for a few reasons. Number one, I keep a storage unit right now and I prefer to not have to continually pay for that. As rents have gone up, so has the price of my storage unit. Thinking long term, it's not good math to keep that space. I'd rather get a bigger rig that has more storage compartments for me to take all of my belongings with me. I'm not going to be able to bring along everything. I'll have to do some purging, some donating, some recycling. But with a bigger RV, I can keep my most precious pack rat stuff with me. I just have to be mindful of the weight and also make sure that the stuff I'm bringing along truly brings me joy. Number two, if I ever decided to let go of Babar, I don't even want to put that out in the atmosphere. Luckily, Babar is nowhere around me right now to hear what I'm saying. But if I decided to, I plan to pay it forward. I have a large family. This would get passed down to my son or my grandbaby. And if no one in the family wants it, then I'll search for a charity or for someone in true need of a small RV and it would be gifted to them. I could do something like give it to 1-800-CARS for kids and get a tax write off for it. But that is so far down the road from today that it's not even worth talking about right now. Number three, another thing I've thought about is that RV parks, a lot of them require that your rig be less than 10 years old for the long term stays. So at some point, if I plan to full time and be stationary somewhere, I will have to upgrade to a newer RV. But right now with Babar, I have until 2030 to even think about all that. I also don't see myself making all the payments until it's paid off and then trying to figure out the money for another one. So, yeah, Babar going to definitely be around. Number four reason why I might let it go. The Most High may eventually bless me with my forever lady. I don't know when. I don't know how. I ain't got to worry about it right now. Don't nobody want me like that. But when it does present itself, I'll be open arms to the idea of it when it does happen. Whoever this queen is, she's going to have to love camping because that's what I'm going to be doing. But I definitely would want to have an RV that she could also be comfortable in and to have the appliances and amenities that would work best for another person. That bar was fashioned for me and my lifestyle. Someone else coming into the equation, I'd have to compromise and find ways for that person to be happy with the RV lifestyle also. Hope that answers the question. I think I more than answered it. I'm not worried about the resale value and won't have to think about it for a very long time anyway. So let's go ahead and get into the negatives pertaining to my RV. Right there's my boy, Tyrone Bradley. Things I do for you. 
new music available on all streaming platforms. First thing I view as unfavorable about the RV is that I had to finance $13,000. The monthly payment is well within my budget, but anytime you need to take out a loan for something, there's going to be interest tacked on that stretches out the terms even more. Right now, I'm not in a position to throw more money at it to pay it off sooner. I'm really hoping I don't end up going to full term with this. I don't want to be paying on this for the next nine years, but it is what it is. It's going to be all right. Always is. Even still, it ain't truly mine until I have the title in my hand. And it looks to be a while before it actually is. So unless I win the lottery or a sugar mama comes along to save the day, <laughs> let's just say I view this as a bad thing to be stuck paying off this loan. Next on the negative list, I'm finding out that towing a travel trailer ain't really my thing. It really hits the gas tank and I have a small rig, 2,900 pounds. So those of you out there towing 5,000 or more, damn, I feel for your wallet. Now, I've heard that diesel trucks are better suited for towing. But when I see the price of diesel at the gas station and the price of buying a diesel truck, I don't know if that's the right thing for me. And I currently don't have a diesel truck, so it don't matter anyway. All I know is a full tank of gas without the trailer and a full tank of gas with the trailer is night and day. It's unattractive. There's been a couple times where I felt like I don't know what the hell I got myself into. Another reason why for me towing really sucks. I hate parking it in a reverse. It's not the business for me. I finally got the concept down. Took spending a couple hundred dollars to get some training for me to figure it out. And actually, I'm glad I took that training. I've learned so much about it that made it worth every penny I spent. Being brand new to towing a trailer, I've watched a ton of YouTube videos. I've asked several people that I knew who had some background with towing. None of it stuck with me until I took the training and practiced the drills. After I got some one-on-one -on -one instructions and guidance, I was able to ace parking in reverse. But if I could go back to before I purchased the RV, thinking about it now, I probably would have bought a Class C. Another thing about my RV, the internal height is six foot one. I'm six foot three. My head is right at the ceiling. It's not undoable. I can make it happen. It's a little terrible as far as my head rubbing against the top of it, but I'm able to make it work. I do have to make sure I use caution when I stand up quickly or jump up, which I never would do anyway, but I can't do it in this case. And the spot on the ceiling where the AC unit is and where the smoke detector is, I just have to make sure that I duck around those areas so I don't bang my head. As far as my head touching the ceiling goes, the one area of the walls that I truly dislike is the overhead cabinets that are right above my bed. They are just in a spot that even if I wasn't as tall as I am, they're low enough that any height person could easily bang their heads on them. I'm considering removing them. However, they do provide a lot of storage space. So before I think about modifying those cabinets, I have to eliminate the stuff I keep in them or figure out where else in the RV they can be stored. The last bad thing about going into this RV that I wanted to share with you all is that I wasn't as ready as I thought I was. I spent so much time learning about camping, RVing, places to visit, products that may be useful, and so many other related things. But I now know that I was just hitting the surface stuff. And with now owning an RV, I found that I need to go into greater detail about everything that pertains to my RV in particular. I knew that a travel trailer gets attached to a truck or an SUV. I knew that there were weight limits that pertain to towing. I didn't know that when driving up a mountain with my trailer in tow and then driving down that mountain on the other side are two totally different experiences. And you approach driving up versus driving down differently. When I'm going up in elevation, it's not correct to just put the pedal to the floor. 
thinking I need to get as much speed as I can so that I can get to the top easily. And when I'm coming down, I can't just ride the brakes the whole time. If I do that stuff over time, I'm putting more wear and tear on my engine and brakes and transmission. I came into this assuming that all I needed to know was how to drive my truck, put it in drive and go forward, put it in reverse and whatever direction I tell it to back up. That's what's going to happen. Now I'm learning and understanding that with towing, it's the opposite direction that you want to steer. The cool thing about all of this with the RV bad things, I can work to turn those into good things. And with the RV good things, I can make them great. I'm in it now and I'm all the way in. I'm loving it already and I'm looking forward to being full time in my RV, living life real big. Any of you out there that got any suggestions, any videos or website information that I can view and help me gain even more knowledge on towing, on anything related to RV travel trailers, I'm all open to it. Please feel free to hit me up with that information on Instagram at Big Man Tiny Kingdom. Peace and blessings, good people. This is Big Man Tiny Kingdom.